For those of you that like to make boom bap beats, today we're gonna cover three different styles that you can make. In the last boom bap tutorial video that I made that's right above my head, I covered some general tips that you can use to help you get that old school aesthetic. But in this video, I wanna cover three very specific styles with very specific techniques that you can use when making boom bap. Starting off, we have the mob deep style of boom bap. So here, let's take a listen to this beat that I made in the style of a mob deep type of beat, namely from the earlier infamous style. By the way guys, if you enjoy my videos, think about subscribing. It's really easy to unsubscribe if you ever get tired of my channel, but it really does help me out. So after reading a lot of what Havoc used to do with these types of samples to make these beats, there are a few specific ideas that you wanna think about. For one, something that was really common was that he would take a straightforward basic sample and pitch it way down. So if we were to take a look at the main component of this beat here, this is actually just a pretty straightforward piano loop that I took here. This sounds a bit gothic and classical, but what I did at this point was I pitched down 12 semitones. And then I used a bunch of effects, namely reels and decimorph to really color this aggressively. Another staple of this style of beat is a driving bass line. You can hear what I did to build this one. I stacked a normal fingered bass from complete. And then I layered an 808 underneath. And I didn't get musical with it. This is something that's really common in a lot of mob deep beats. They just use very short, very repetitive loops that were not very musical or melodic overall. This helped build that really aggressive feel. Lastly, when it comes to the drums of this beat, From my understanding, Q-Tip helped with a lot of the drums from the Infamous. You can hear the pretty big changes in Havoc's drums in later Mob Deep albums. But for this beat here, what I did was I took a drum break and I applied a little bit of reverb onto the snare and the hi-hat. Otherwise, this is how it would have sounded. But after adding a bit of reverb, we sort of get that hollow big feeling. When we pair that with the dark gothic piano loop, that's how you go about creating that dark mob deep feeling. Next up, we have the DITC Lord Finesse Buckwild style of beat. So let's take a listen here. So with this style of beat, in order to get this aesthetic, a big focus here is sample selection as well as sample processing. These types of beats had a lot of low end filter happening, and so picking and choosing samples that already have a full robust low end and low mid range presence is gonna be key. If you were to instead choose a sample that was very high pitched, like a high pitched piano for example, once you begin doing your low pass filtering, you'd probably run into some issues. You'd likely end up low end passing most of the sample away and be left with a thin sound that just would not be full enough to make the beat sound complete. So far to take the effects off of this sample, you can hear. This sample already started with a lot of low end presence and robustness. I should point out though, I did pitch this sample down a few semitones as you can see here. This is something that you can do in order to shift the frequency presence of your entire sample down to better fill up that low, low mid section that's gonna be required to get these types of beats to sound full. After this, what I did was I added this filtering effect. I really tried to emphasize certain frequencies and increase how present they are, as you can see with this hump here while reducing neighboring frequencies. After 
After this, I used reels once again just to color it some more. But the real star of the show with this sample is Decimort. You can hear the difference once we turn it off and on. This really brought that old sampler type of emulation. This type of audio quality was very common when producers would use samplers like the SP1200. Even though I did use Decimore to achieve this type of aesthetic, general bit crushing plugins can help you achieve this in a similar way. Another very distinct idea with these beats was using a tambourine instead of, or in conjunction with a hi-hat. This really helped fill up the high end of the beat, especially with how much filtering we did. We're gonna need something big and present up in that space. So you can hear before I included this tambourine. <laughs> This beat felt a bit empty in the high end, but even just using a straightforward hi-hat might not be enough to fill up that space. But if you use something larger and more present like a tambourine with a little bit of reverb on it, now this starts to become enough to make this whole beat feel full. And finally, the last style that we're gonna look at, which is in my opinion the most difficult to execute, which is the Pete Rock style of beat. Pete Rock was known for meshing together multiple samples from different songs and somehow figuring out a way to piece them together seamlessly. So I tried to do that with this beat right here. The first thing that I did was I chopped up this piano from this song and created this loop. After this, I layered this Fender Rhodes sample right on top of it. By the way, this is actually the exact same sample that I showed you guys from the last beat. I just took a different piece of that same sample just to create this layer right here. And you'll also notice if I go back into the first sample that I showed you, I had to pitch this down four semitones. Playing with the pitch and the timing of all your different samples is something that you'll need to likely do in order to get all the pieces to fit together for this style of beat. After this, I grabbed yet another sample and I did some low pass filtering to get this bass tone right here. By the way, if this technique of sampling bass is something that you're interested in learning, check out the video that's right above my head. It can be a great way of finding more unique bass textures for your beats. At this point, all I had to do was build my drums on top and there you go. And yet another thing that Pete Rock was known for was his love of horn samples. So I threw this additional layer on top. This would probably show up in the hook somewhere. This was taken from yet another sample. So as you can see, I used four different songs to build out these four elements in this beat. This did take me several attempts to make, by the way, you guys are just seeing the end product here, but this was incredibly hard to do. In order to pull off this style, it's gonna be extremely important that you use samples that are not full and busy. Using more open samples is gonna be your best bet. This is something that I've been saying since I started my YouTube channel. When it comes to sampling, choosing samples that are more open will allow you to do so much more and more easily make beats like these. Obviously, with the things like the drums and the smaller techniques to boom bap, I gloss over some really important concepts. The reason being, you can check out my older video on boom bap beats in order to get some more general ideas on how to make these types of beats. The link should be showing up on the screen right now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. If so, like and subscribe. Head over to betterbeatmaker.com if you want to check out my full online beat making course. The link to my free drum kit is available in the description box below, as well as a link to the Discord if you want to join my producer community. And I'll see you guys next time.